Earthworm Jim video game review. Jim was, as the title hints at, a regular earthworm, and then he found a superpowered suit that he could hop into and yeah, turn him into a superhero. That never happened to you? He now has to rescue a princess and fight a crow, which was already his mortal enemy even before the super suit, and face off against various really nasty, and I do mean that in the very literal sense, like they're gross, boss enemies who try to impede him in his quest for the princess. This game, you know, it's it's from the 90s, and you know, you might be kind of lucky to even get it to run on a machine today. I personally could get it to work, but there was there were issues with the sound, which is really too bad because the sound is great in this game. But if you can get it to run, I definitely do recommend this game if it's at all you know, the, the sort of thing you're into. It's very classic arcade kind of game with you, you know, jumping and just basically maneuvering your way through these various levels and, you know, fighting off enemies and there are various, you know, time-based uh, jumping puzzles and the like, you know, these little things where you have to make sure you, you know, it's a very tight window of being able to actually get through this stuff. It's it's a really challenging game, and it can be extremely frustrating, but at the same time, immensely, you know, it's so much fun and so enjoyable to actually get through, because you really feel like you're doing something, you know. It's not like a lot of games today where it's just kind of, oh, you know, another power-up, another another level gained. This is the real deal, you know. This is back when they made level, made video games to be really tough. And it actually, possibly partially on account of that, it's a really short game if you actually just run through it, you know. If you know exactly what you're supposed to do and you don't have a lot of trouble with it, you can complete this game in, let's say, four hours, I would say. The levels are usually short enough that you can complete them in 10 to 15 minutes, again, assuming nothing goes wrong. And there are around 20 levels. Now, I believe seven of these are the so-called anti-asteroids levels, which are just increasingly difficult. Basically, you race this crow called Psychro through an asteroid field. And, yeah, you're, you're dodging asteroids and trying to gather these, I think, drops of water or something, which, if you get enough, you get a continue. And basically, if you don't beat Psychro to the end, you have to face off against him on the planet's surface. I think it's Jim traveling from the planet you've just completed to the next planet where the next level takes place. Yeah, he has a spaceship too, and it's actually this tiny little... It's like a single jet engine. I, yeah, it's interesting that. But yeah, the rest of the levels are, you know, different ones. Oh, and also, there are three rounds of the so-called... Like I said, nasty, snot a problem, where you literally bungee jump a, against a giant ball of snot. Yeah, and his bungee cord is, of course, also snot, and basically you have to make his bungee cord snap, and he's going to try to do the same to you, and yeah, three rounds, increasingly difficult. But yeah, other than that, all the levels are different ones, and you know... Like, the first level is a junkyard. Nothing too special there. The second level, it is technically a planet, but it's basically, you know, hell. It's even called... What the heck, I think. And, yeah. 
So, yeah, and you encounter what you, about what you'd expect in hell, you know, demons, lawyers, a snowman breathing fire, and, you, you know, you go underwater in a couple of levels and face off against a goldfish in a bowl and the cats that guard it. You know, it's there's a lot of creative ideas and creative levels in this game. It's, you know, the levels don't really remind you of stuff you've seen in other levels, a lot of the time, certainly. And a lot of the challenges also, just stuff you haven't done before, you know, in the underwater levels, you actually have to use this tiny little, I guess, submarine sort of thing, it's tiny little, it's one big bubble and there are engines on it and you can basically steer it in any direction you want but I think it's the air. The air is gonna run out within a set number of seconds and in that time you have to maneuver through not really a maze but you have to make your way through the you know the path in time and sometimes you can fill more oxygen on along the way. And you should also note, you know, it sounds like you should just rush. If you do that, every single time you, you know, hit the bubble, the glass bubble against the wall, there's gonna get another little crack in it. And after a while, the glass is gonna burst. And that's it, you're gonna have to start over. So, you know, again, it's interesting. And, you know, you don't have a you know, an energy bar or health bar or something. No, you can just look at the glass and see, yeah, okay, this might, you know, break soon or, okay, I'm in the clear. In the regular levels, you basically, you can jump, you can grab onto ledges, you can walk, of course, side to side, you can use your head as a whip. Yeah, your, your entire body basically as a whip. Your entire worm body can double as a whip. I would assume it gives him headaches, but no word is spoken of that. And the whip is both a weapon and you can also use it to transport yourself. Every single time you see a hook it will always blink, so you know to really let you know this you can grab onto. You can latch your head onto that. You just have to make sure that your whip head actually hits the hook. And again, it's a pretty tight window for being able to actually hit that. And sometimes you have to swing from one hook to another. And yeah, that's you know one of the ways you can move in the game. And of course, when there is something like that, you can actually get there in another way. You can also use your head as a helicopter. And it's you know it's a worm. It's it's long and it's straight, so of course it can be used as a helicopter. And that pretty well covers it for movement. Now, like I said, one of your weapons is your head whip. Other than that, you have, and this is one of the reasons I love this game, a submachine gun. A just tiny little red submachine gun. And it even once you get to below 100 bullets, it will actually slowly recharge its bullets. So you can basically always shoot, but you know, you'll still want to make sure you have plenty of ammo. And in addition to the bullets, you can also get these power up kind of, you know, where it fires just one shot, but it's extremely powerful and there are heat seeking missiles. I do believe those are the only weapons in this game. The second one has a bit more. And basically, you can whip and shoot in any direction. Now, you can't jump and shoot, but you can't whip. You can't jump and whip. But yeah, you can, you know, you can sh attack upwards, downwards, or to either side. And you know, in fact, even with gun, you can even angle it, you know, diagonally. So really, there's like, I can't do the math right now, but you know, there are plenty of different directions you can attack in from where you're standing. The 
enemies and just in general the design is very creative, very cartoony. There's, you know, the, the sense of humor is also very cartoony, and very, yeah, in the end credits, which are also hilarious, by the way, and it actually has, you know, you don't get the real ending if you only complete it on easy, so that's kind of annoying, and in fact, it even rubs your nose, and it, it, I'm not going to give away what it does, what exactly it does, but it's, it's pretty hilarious, and if you actually get the proper ending, yeah, no comment, but it's it's pretty funny. It's if, if you like the humor of the game, you're gonna find it funny. But yeah, the end credits, the special thanks include Tex Avery, and you can really tell why. It is very cartoony, very inspired by that kind of really over-the-top cartoon kind of thing. You know, it's a very non-violent game, and I don't think there's really anything disturbing in it. You know, sometimes cartoon violence can be somewhat disturbing and, you know, dark or violent in a way, but this really isn't. And at the same time, you can really tell when you've been injured, you know. But it's really more an, of an annoyance than, you know, it wouldn't upset a child. Let's put it that way, you know. Not in its delicate sensibilities, at least, it might, you know, make it really annoyed. That's actually the one thing you should mind about, you know, this game being played by children. They might get really frustrated. The... The levels are sufficiently different and, you know, it keeps having something new for you to do that, you know, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty short game, but you might still get bored with it if they didn't make an effort to do this, but they really do, you know. No two levels feel like exactly the same thing, and, you know, you get to do very different things along the way, so it feels like, you know, every level feels very distinct from the others, is the tendency, at least. The... The humor is somewhat lowbrow. It gets pretty disgusting, and yeah, you know, as an example, the final level, and this is not a spoiler because you can see the list of levels from right on, you know, from when you start the game. The last level is called Buckville, and the creature you fight, I don't recall if she's a queen or a princess, but. Yeah, she has a really large posterior, and yeah, it's it's not entirely unlike the Swarm Queen from Futurama. So you know, maybe there's some cross inspiration there. Maybe they looked at the same real life bug. I don't know exactly, but yeah, the music is quite good and, you know, very goofy, like, you know, most of, most of this game. The sound is great, really crisp and just very exaggerated kind of sounds. The, the universe is just fascinating. It, you know, it's either going to completely deter you or just utterly and completely draw you in. You know, there's, I don't think there is much of a middle ground with this one. You're gonna completely dig it or utterly hate it. And you're gonna be able to tell from right off the bat because it doesn't really change over the course of the game, you know. And it certainly never feels like they at some point just ran out of creativity or didn't feel like doing the same thing or, you know, following the same tone anymore or something. One more thing I gotta mention is the level for Pete's sake, which has you babysitting a, or escorting really, a small innocent puppy by the name of Pete, who turns into a hulking vicious monster if he gets hurt. So it's up to you, because when he gets hurt and turns into that hulking brute, he's gonna bite you and just drag you a bit back in the level, spit you out, turn back into the innocent little puppy, and then you can, 
continue following him home. That's really the entire level is you have to defend him as he makes his way home. And basically, he's going to keep walking, you know, if you don't prevent him from doing so. Now, the two things you can do are you can whip him, and he's not going to get mad at this, somehow. And that makes him jump. I guess it startles him. But you do have to hit him, you know, not just whip near him. And you can shoot at him, and this isn't going to hurt him, and it makes it very clear. And it's not like he, I don't know, it does this kind of cloud thing. It, you're gonna know it when you see it, you know, or if you see it in a cartoon, you know exactly, oh, it's like, it, you know, it's not hitting them. And, you know, basically you have to make sure he doesn't fall into any holes and he doesn't come into contact with any, <laughs> any enemies, whether they be stationary or otherwise. And you yourself, of course, also have to avoid these enemies if you don't kill them. And sometimes there are just so many that you can't kill them all. And that's essentially the level. And it's just so much fun and at the same, at the same time, again, extremely frustrating, at least potentially so. And that's the entire game, but it just, they really hit the balance really well, you know. But definitely, this game, if you play it on you know, medium or difficult difficulty setting, it's really gonna put you through the works, you know, it's really gonna challenge you. And that's something really good, I think. You know, on the very, on the easiest difficulty setting, some of the game is a bit of a breeze, but the later levels are still gonna challenge you. But basically, you know, I always say, if you don't want to be challenged, what are you doing playing a video game? Unless you're playing, I don't know, you know, something not challenging. The Sims, something, you know, something that isn't about challenge. But if you play a game like this, it's about the challenge, you know. But yeah, arcade action, classic kind of game. Something also quite nice in the game is that you... Sometimes you get to choose between, you know, the, it kind of points you in two different directions. And one of the arrows will say, you know, I think actually it says wimp or, you know, like hero or, you know, something like that. And yeah, basically you get to choose, do I want to put myself through more of this or do I want to just take the easy way out and just be done with it now, you know, and yeah, it just, because at, at that point in the level, you're maybe, you know, it's a good time for you to make that decision and kind of, yeah, and sometimes also in the game, you, you know, you'll get these little stars, which signify that earlier in the level, there's something for you to pick up, and in some of the later levels, you actually really have to wonder, am I going to bother going back and seeing what it is, or am I just going to move on and just not think about it, you know? Yeah, I believe that is everything. Almost. One level has you going up against a mad scientist, and... As any mad scientist, of course something has happened during his experiments. And this particular experiment included one of the monkeys that he was testing on, which has now attached to his head. And when he attacks you, the monkey is using its arms to climb along the like this steel rod along the ceiling and the you know the mad scientist himself is throwing I don't know vials of acid at you I guess D dangerous chemicals at least yeah that's pretty creative and actually after him you face off against this I guess invention of his which is part chicken and you're kind of, both of you are falling rapidly and basically, 
you know, both of you have some control over where you're going, and if you're at the top of the screen or at the bottom of the screen while you're plummeting downwards, and there's no real, you know, it's not like after a while you just fall to your death and that's it, but basically just, you know, there's constantly something going on on the screen, and yeah, you have to attack this robot, I guess, while it's attacking you, and it's just a ton of fun. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.